Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Standard Open in Indianapolis, brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I'm Nick Miller, alongside Team Card Hoarders, Kent Ketter. How you doing, sir? Good, good. Alive. Always good to have you here. Yeah. You're playing a beatdown yeah. deck, yep. as you are wont to do. Yep. And uh, you guys here at Team Card Hoarder have came up with the White Red Vehicles deck. Correct. A very streamlined yes. build of this uh, deck. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you guys came to it. I'm pretty sure this is a Tinjum build. He's usually yeah. kind of one of the, yeah. the guys behind most of your decks. Um, so... Like a couple weeks ago, once the spoiler dropped, Tenjum uh, put together like a red-white aggressive deck. Uh, Smuggler's Copter, like early on, was kind of one of the best cards that we felt in the format. Um, and then we started looking at just some of the other creatures available. Uh, Toolcraft Exemplar, it's a 3-2 in a lot of situations. That's a better rate than you get out of most of your attackers. Mm -hmm. um, Veteran Motorist, for those who haven't read it, it's Scry's <laughs> 2. Scry 2 is great. If you haven't Scryed 2 recently, I recommend you do it. Um, it's loads of fun. So a bunch of four ofs there, uh, Thraven Inspector as well, um, the clue with artifact. The, the artifact. Yeah. yeah, the small edge is there. Uh, Selfless Spirit, we worked back in to the deck, uh, and Selfless Spirit actually ties into, one, it's a K return protection um, spell. Additionally, it protects our Lord, Dapala. Uh, because Dapala is unique in that it actually wants to get into combat in a couple situations, and having the Selfless Spirit to blank there is pretty nice. Along with Spirit protecting your vehicles, from instant speed removal. It's not that common, but your vehicles are that good that normally trading your spirit sets up your opponent for some really awkward situations, You know, especially if that's their only instant speed removal spell. Uh, we also have PNLR. Sure. Just a two of in the deck, gets you some good uh, blockers, you know, two for one creatures. And the abilities on Pia are one thing that a lot of people don't weight heavily enough. I actually think her abilities are exceptionally good. I got to play with Pia at the pre-release and you quickly realize how good the pumping of the artifacts can be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something you overlook, but even when just the Thopter is getting pumped, that can often yep. be enough. Yeah, this deck normally two pumps is pretty easy. Uh, three pumps, which sometimes draws a penalty flag, but that's okay. <laughs> um, sometimes you can pump it three times. So right. it's, it's, it's not a bad gig. On the vehicle side, we kept it very simple. Uh, fourth Smuggler's Copter. It's probably the best creature in standard, so of course and then the other vehicles is where we get a little more, I don't want to say crazy, but they're there for specific right. reasons. Yeah, this is where the discussion starts for everyone Correct. when they're building this deck. Yep. Everyone's got the four smugglers copter. Correct. And then it's all, what other vehicles do you want alongside? You chose to go with three of the Fleet Wheel Cruiser Correct. and two of the flagship. Yep. Um, the Fleet Wheel Cruiser, simply put, just blow up a lot of the artifacts that exist in the format, or excuse me, the Planeswalkers that exist in the format. Um, you have your Nissas, your Lilianas, your Chandras, all the like. Four mana, put it in play, you know, blow up that Planeswalker yeah. is a pretty common sequence. That's why we went with three. We don't feel like, or the team collectively didn't feel like it was a card you wanted to see tons of, so a four of didn't make sense. For the most part, though, Fleet Wheel along with Toolcraft are the cards that we look to sideboard out in a lot of situations, but we'll go over that when we step into the sideboard. The last card in the deck, and this is what I think gives the deck the advantage over your, your really aggressive red-white decks, Sky Sovereign Council Flagship, or... Battlestar ship, <laughs> massive thing. Right, um, the Death Star. Yes. That card swings all of your aggressive, aggressive matchups very quickly. And one thing, while this is an aggressive deck, and in a lot of rules you're taking the aggressive matchup, the sideboard actually sets us up to become the control deck in a lot of situations, and Sky Sovereign ties into that really, really well. Um, right. You know, especially game one, where if you go, you know, like one, two, four, five, or one, two, three, five, Sky Sovereign's normally going to close the game from that position. Right. So we have the, the creature base here. Yep. I want to talk about this because, you know, obviously the Scry 2 and the 3-1 is very good on the veteran motorist. Yes. Uh, but we haven't got to see Dipala in a lot of action yeah. yet. Yeah. How good is the ability where you just get to start kind of churning through your deck? Has yeah. it been relevant? Um, so the, the tap ability on Dipala, uh so whenever it becomes tapped, be it from an end-to-turn vehicle activation, don't forget it, or actual combat or, you know, crewing a vehicle to attack, it's been pretty good. Really, we view Dipala as either letting us use all of our mana efficiently or in certain matchups you're just crashing it in and like tapping out a bunch the important part about the Pala though that most people don't take into account it's an anthem for your dwarves so all those Lilianas that people are like super excited about like blowing up your X ones the Pala stops that additionally the plus one plus one on vehicles is is where it's at I actually think her ability to reveal the top cards is her third it's her worst ability okay um, the other two abilities are much better with my list with four Dapalas and four veteran motorists, if they go turn three Liliana and we have the copter, that's eight ways to kill it on the four. 
that not a lot of people, or excuse me, like when we untap right. on the three, you just four damage, kill your You have many ways to take yep. care of Planeswalkers, um, yeah. I just really like the Apollo for that reason, so. Okay, so you have a pretty aggressive build, but then as you mentioned, your cyborg is very transformational. Yes. You have a ton of removal, because yep. in your main deck, you only have Declaration Stone yep. and Harness the Light, or Harness Correct. Lightning to kind of deal with other Correct. creatures, but you got everything here in the cyborg. Yep. You know, we have Fragmentize, we got Galvanic Bombardment, and we have this one, which I like, Weaver of Lightning. We saw this a little bit, slightly in the old standard yeah. in the Blue Red Fever Visions yeah. decks, but here you have it alongside, can't mention, Skywhaler Shot, yep. another card we saw a lot at the pre-release. So the way this sideboard was constructed, you have the four Gideons off to the side doing their you know, Gideon things, but then if you notice the other 11 cards, it's three Weavers, eight Instants and Sorceries, with another six in the main deck between the Declarations and the Harness Lightnings. So anytime you need to pull up and that, that phrase refers to being, instead of being the aggressive deck, you want to slow it down a little. Weaver or Lightning plus some combination of the spells in your sideboard sets you up perfectly. Um, you know, be it like a mirror, a true mirror, which we don't expect to see a lot of, but like a pseudo mirror against the more aggressive version mm -hmm. of this. That sets us up really well because um, Weaver still crews our, our Smuggler's Copter and it blocks Smuggler's Copter as a 1-4 right. reach. Both ways there. Yep, gets, gets it all for you. That also helps us offset... The first Galvanic Bombardment in the mirror and against your X3 aggro decks is kind of medium. Weaver helps you try to... Sure, turns it into three. The hope, and then after that, Bombardment's like really, really absurd. Okay. So. All right, so a lot of the talk coming into this event was Smuggler's Copter. Sure. You know, you've tested a lot with it. We have a few rounds in the books now. Is the card overperforming? Is it as good as advertised? Or, you know, where's it, where it stand right now? I think it is as good as advertised. I do think a lot of people are just fearful of how the card works. It changes, vehicles change the ebb and flow of the game. Uh, thankfully, I did a, a good amount of Kaladesh Limited, so I'm, a little, I'm comfortable with how the vehicles change the sequencing, but I think Copter is just fine. People in like a month or so will settle into how to best interact with it. Is it the creatures, is it the Copter itself? Um, do you want to, you know, like kill it when it attacks or before? You know, all those little things will work themselves out. Sure. I think Copter will define the format, but if people start complaining about it, you're just being lazy. That's really all it is. <laughs> like the cop copter is is great, but not unbearable. I think as soon as the complaints start about that, I'm just going to kind of nod and smile because it's right. you know it's a fine card. That's actually why we played the harness lightnings in the main deck. Right. So you have your own. Just one more answer to it. Uh, you know, in sideboard we get more stuff, but having a harness lightning main deck. Is neat. So. We also have to talk about the mana base because something you know Kaladesh gave a lot of these aggressive decks, yeah. especially the enemy colored land yep. or decks are the new fast lands. Sure. You get to play that alongside Needle Spire, have very good mana. Yeah. Um, one thing, stop playing Aether Hub. Just stop it. All of you that are two-color Aether Hubbing, you're wrong. There's probably somebody much better than me who shows me why I'm wrong, but for the start, we're a two-color deck. Aether Hub activates like once and then you run out of energy. We have no other energy in your deck. Um, so be careful about that. But in the case of this mana base, four Vantage, you draw two of them in the first three turns, your mana's perfect. Sure. Four Needle Spires, it's a red-white land on the one. It's obviously a great creature in the mid-game, and crewing some vehicles is actually pretty neat. Um, a lot of, I, I won a couple games where I just used the Needle Spires to crew. But outside of that, ten planes, six mountains, keep it real simple. Yeah. It sets you up well for Thalia, and, I mean, 16 of our lands come into play tapped every single time. And that untapped. sets us up. Yep, sets yeah. us up really well for you know the mid to late games, uh, hitting right. the fourth and fifth land drops there. And that's the key to I think the aggressive decks in this format is having that because we saw that a lot, you know, in the last standard format. The aggressive decks had a lot of tap lands yep. they had to kind of deal with, which kind of you know hampered the amount of sure. aggressive decks you sure. could play. But this, and we've seen like the red black decks all kind of you know be aggressive, make it work, which which much. Uh, much more untapped or forgiving mana. <laughs> uh, as far as the Aether Hub thing goes, definitely if you're in um, paired colors, it might be something you have to suck up, but really keep in mind when you're playing a two-color deck, is Aether Hub something you really want to be accessing? We just we went through a lot of lists early in testing that had them, and it was just like, what, what are we doing? Yeah. This isn't very Especially fun. if you don't have enough energy to really yeah, capitalize right, right, on right. that synergy. We have two, two energy cards in the deck. doesn't do much for us, but that, that was the big thing we learned, um, you know, just the Aether Hub mana base type thing. Uh, so... All right, lastly, let's wrap up with a couple questions about sure. kind of the format and where you guys yeah. were testing and what you came from. Mm -hmm. Is there any decks that you guys kind of worked on that didn't quite make it? You know, there's that the, the idea was there, but you yeah. couldn't find the right build. So we started out with like a red-green aggro deck, and I think that that red-green energy aggro, it looked fine, but this felt like just a better version of that. Um, 
Now, as far as decks that aren't in this mid-range aggressive slant, which is kind of like what we do consistently sure. uh, on the team, there was a uh, a couple mono red variants that popped up that seemed you know, pretty plausible, but not quite great. The one deck that we really liked that just didn't get the final nod, uh, we had a black-green graveyard-based strategy. Um, we had amalgams as well, but like we're never casting them. Sure. That was pretty decent. We definitely had some of the team looking at it, but we felt like that was a deck that better punished certain types of mid-range or control decks. Uh, it's it's week one efficacy, meaning like how powerful are we just in, in the vacuum, wasn't mm -hmm. quite there. Okay. Uh, we definitely are very risk-averse in the week ones, and we like to play decks that are asking the questions and not really trying to configure the control decks. Uh, I think a lot of people showing up with control decks in week one are really asking for, you know, some problems if their stuff doesn't line up. So we did have a, a Jun mid-range deck as well that fell victim to, we don't know if we're putting the right cards in there. Sure. So. All right, well, your team's off to a pretty good start. You guys have uh, got your foot to the pedal, so to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, the pedal jokes. The vehicle jokes will never stop. Hey, we're not going to stop making no, them. No, not at all. All right, so for Ken Catter, I'm Nick Miller. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Indy.